The explosive allegations of rape against former Today Show host Matt Lauer led to a fierce he said, she said, and questions about both Matt Lauer's story and his accusers. In an upcoming book by Ronan Farrow out this week, Catch and Kill, Brooke Nails accused Matt Lauer of raping her at the 2014 Winter Olympics in Sochi. This week, he released a detailed letter denying the rape and saying the encounter was consensual. But Brooke Nevels described the alleged assault as non-consensual. And she went on to say that she got sick after the fact and that the experience eventually derailed her life, led her to abuse alcohol. But here is what some people are trying hard to understand here. Brooke says she kept seeing Lauer in a consensual relationship in New York after the fact. Joining me now to discuss psychotherapist Dr. Robbie Ludwig. And Dr. when the letter came out from Matt Lauer and his attorney it said read in full and I did so on the air and he said look in the beginning I stayed quiet for my family and now he's saying enough mm -hmm. is enough but could each side Matt Lauer and Brooke both believe their story of what happened that night absolutely and I'm sure Matt was advised to keep quiet initially and what the studies show is with this kind of acquaintance type of rape or date rape if you will very often the perpetrator is unaware of harming the victim okay. they view the victim as somebody who wanted to have sex so from their perspective they simply did nothing wrong and yet the victim can have a very different experience I think what's mm -hmm. hard for a lot of people to understand is that this woman then went on to have a conceptual sexual relationship with Matt and so that's confusing to a lot of people and I think that's exactly what Ronan Farrow is doing and has done even before this book, obviously, in terms of the article he's written, um, award winning now because of it mm -hmm. and exposing a culture that has been there and just the education, not specifically speaking on Matt Lauer to this, but in terms of a culture. And he said he's been doing interviews recently and he said this is about the institution, the larger institution that if you conceal you know something that that causes pain and hurt to others and you need to talk about it. That's right. There was kind of this old boys network that existed within the culture and a cultural mindset that basically blamed the victim and shamed the victim. So mm -hmm. if somebody was a victim of sexual harassment or sexual assault, the burden was on them to deal with it. And now there really is a different conversation going on culturally where if someone says, no, it's not okay to pursue them sexually, that there is a place for boundaries, that women do have rights, men have rights if they're being victimized as well. Mm -hmm. And so we are more enlightened and educated, and that's really better for everyone. Mm -hmm. And a couple seconds left here. She did say that she was fearful she would lose her job. Mm -hmm. But in the letter, Matt Lauer said, look, she didn't even work for me then. She was with Meredith, which I don't even think the it's too simplistic to me for him to answer that way on how she was feeling. Yeah, I mean, there was a power imbalance, which is why so many workplaces don't like when people date within the workplace. Mm -hmm. There was a power imbalance, and I'm sure she was frightened because Matt Lauer is or was a powerful person within NBC. I'm sure that existed. I'm sure it's very complex, and that's why it's all playing out the way it is right now. Yeah, Andy Lack from NBC saying, look, he was fired immediately afterwards. Mm -hmm. And to the other uh, facts in the book, he's saying they're not facts that NBC denies those and that they terminated Matt Lauer soon after. Dr. Robbie Ludwig, thank you. Always a pleasure.